there's been a lot of discussion about whether a Kickstarter printer can actually compete with something like the Bamboo Lab H2C. So instead of talking about specs or theory, I ran real prints, straight out of the box, no tuning, no adjustments, just results. This is a Snapmaker U1, a tool changing speedster with a lot to prove. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Printosaurus. I'm Aaron, and today we're going to cover the new printer by Snapmaker, the U1. What'd you guys think of that window? So Snapmaker U1 has this clear window in the back. So if you want to be on the front side or the back side or any side, you can see what you're printing. It's different. It's kind of cool. But, uh, you know, that's not really what we're here today to talk about. You guys are probably wondering how well this thing prints out of the box. So why don't we just go ahead and skip all the unboxing and all that good stuff and get right to that. Let's do it. So before we talk about the prints that I have in front of me, I do want to talk a little bit about this machine since it is a new machine. There is a little bit of setup that you need to do or be aware of. Um, so very simple to mount the feeders. You have feeders on the left and right side of the printer. Those feed the spools and the spool holders here. So you attach your spool holders, easy enough to do. Feeders snap in place, very simple PTFE tubes. Not gonna be an issue. One thing I want you to pay attention to is when you get your tool heads up here and you get them mounted in their trays, uh, pay attention to which one goes where. And also the USB-C connector. Do not use any power tools for that. Make sure you hand screw these in. It is plastic um, and I don't want you to strip it. So use hand tools. Don't use any power tools. And that's really the only thing you really need to worry about with the assembly of this whole thing. Instructions are good. You're not gonna have any issues. Snapmaker did a great job. So the first thing I tested with this printer was a multicolor print, something I feel like that was pretty complex and it might look pretty familiar and that is Michelangelo. And the reason why I say it might be familiar is because if you've watched any of my videos recently, you would see that I printed one of these guys, Raphael, on the H2C. So why not do a direct comparison to a printer that is twice the cost. The Snapmaker U1, uh, $1,000 retail, $850 right now for pre-order, compared to the H2C at $2,400. Quite a bit of savings if this guy performs just as good. And I have to say, really, really impressed with the quality. I feel like no doubt um, if I put these side by side, I don't think you could tell me which one came on which printer. I would really have to nitpick. And the only reason why I'm gonna say anything is because Full transparency, our Michelangelo does have some imperfections at the top of the head. That is because our perch tower fell over at the 94% mark, and uh, that resulted in a little bit of stringing, things like that. I was able to tape down that perch tower to mitigate that, so I did have to babysit it that last 6%, and we ended up still with a successful print. Other than that, this thing turned out fantastic, and then. As I mentioned, I don't think you could tell me which one came out of which printer. So how great is that to have a printer half the price that, guess what? Another surprise, well maybe not really. This finished in 15 hours, 35 minutes, compared to 25 hours for the Raphael. So not only does it look the same, but it finished 10 hours faster. Fantastic first test for the U1. Now in terms of filament savings, very minor, uh, 438 grams for our Michelangelo and our Raphael here finished with 498 grams. So, you know, 40, 50 gram difference, not that big of a deal, uh, but uh, we did have some filament savings as well. Today's video is brought to you by Justway, justway.com. Jump online, check them out, and get things printed just the way you like. Very easy to use service, customer service is great as well. Check them out, justway.com. All right, so our next test was more of a production run. I wanted to see how this printer performed printing uh, a group of objects. Uh, I feel like that opens the door for potential failures when you start working with supports, multiple objects, multiple colors, things like that. So I did 16 elves, um, and these are ornaments for Christmas tree. But the idea with that was to just do a basic production run and see how this performs in a 
in a production environment. And again, it performed fantastic. I didn't have a single failure, no purge tower issues this time, much smaller as well. Uh, but uh, I am very, very happy with the results. Uh, no bleeding of colors, no stringing, no oozing, uh, nothing, nothing uh, to indicate any quality issues, just overall fantastic. So let's talk about speed comparisons. What I did was I sliced this file also in the H2C as a direct comparison, uh, just to give you an idea of any speed differences. And these results might surprise you. So let's talk about them. So for the U1, 17 hours and 30 minutes for that production run for our elves. On the H2C, it's saying it will do it in 17 hours, 12 minutes. So in this case, the H2C is a little bit faster. Not by much, but it is. Now in comparison to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle print, which was 10 hours faster for the U1, uh, I thought for sure I would see something similar with the ELF production print, and we didn't. Uh, so just an interesting fact, it seems like the more complex print is where you're gonna really start saving time, and the ones that aren't as complex, you're really not gonna save as much time as you would think compared to a printer with somewhat the same functionality. So food for thought there. I haven't had any failures with the U1 so far. I did at the end of all this kick off the test print that it comes with just because my son wanted it and it's a dragon. So he thought it was pretty cool. And that turned out fantastic as well. All right, so this is a kickstart printer. So that means that there might be a couple of quirks or issues along the way. And I did have a firmware release uh, that seems like it remedied uh, what I was experiencing, but I'm gonna share with you. So no issues with print quality whatsoever. So that part has been fine. Where I've had issues is this connecting to the Snapmaker Orca slicer. For whatever reason, um, it times out and then it won't reconnect. And I've had to either restart the printer on a number of occasions or do a combination of restarting the printer and restarting my slicer. And after a minute or two, it seems like it resolves itself, but it is an issue that I experienced on numerous occasions up until the firmware release. I'm gonna post that version down below uh, if you're curious as which version may have fixed that. But so far, it seems much better. Again, it hasn't affected print quality or anything like that, but I wanted to share my total experience and that is part of it. Uh, something else that I noticed with this printer right off the bat is these feeders are really loud. They are very loud. And the printer overall is loud. It doesn't have a top cover. Uh, there are some members out there who have uh, made some covers and printed some things. So we're going to test a couple of those add-ons in another video. For the value, this thing under $1,000, absolutely worth it. Fantastic features. You're not gonna get a printer that has multi-tool heads that just works. This thing answers the bell. So it is a fantastic printer so far. Definitely, definitely recommend it. Now the real question you guys are probably gonna ask me, I've had some comments already on the H2C videos I've done, is which one is for you? So I'm gonna do a direct video comparison of the two side by side. We'll go through multiple prints. We'll go through feature differences and then we will really weigh the pros and cons as to why one might be more beneficial to you than the other. But for now, based on this printer alone and it being its own review, absolutely recommend this printer. It is fantastic so far and I think it's only going to get better. Pretty cool. It's a great time to be in 3D printing. So many cool things coming out. We got the index coming out soon. Uh, Bontech set up. The H2C, as I mentioned, is out. Uh, the U1 is here. There are so many cool things coming out and it is just a very exciting time to be 3D printing. So if you guys have any other questions, drop them down below. Comment, subscribe, uh, like the videos, all that good stuff. Cannot do this without you. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Every day is a new day and we are having a great time here at the Printer Source. So thank you guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.